Welcome to my lecture online. These methods that we saw in the first two videos for, let's say, horizontal motion also works for vertical motion. Let's say that we throw an object up with an initial speed of 144 feet per second. It will reach maximum height and then come back down. What we're trying to do here is, given the equation describing that motion, 144t, this is the initial velocity upward, times the time minus 16t squared. And what we're trying to do is find the velocity as a function of time, the acceleration as a function of time, evaluate the velocity and acceleration at t equals 3. We also are trying to find out what the maximum height is that this object will reach and how long it will take for the object to come back to the ground. How do we do that? Well, we start with the equation here and first we'll find the velocity equation and the acceleration equation by taking the derivative just like we did in the previous video. So the velocity as a function of time is going to be equal to the derivative of the position with respect to time and of course here we're dealing in the vertical direction. So this is equal to 144 minus 32 times t and the acceleration is a function of time which is the derivative of the velocity dv dt and that will be equal to minus 32. But notice here that we have a constant. In other words, the acceleration is a constant. It does not depend on time. So if we're going to evaluate these two functions, the velocity when time is equal to 3 seconds, we take our velocity equation, so that's equal to 144 minus 32 times 3, which is 96. So this is equal to 48 meters per second. And the acceleration when time is equal to 3 is going to be equal to minus 32, the units, oh, and this is not meters, we're dealing with feet here, so let me change that to feet per second, and this will be feet per second squared. And notice the acceleration is a constant, so it does not depend on time. Well, that was kind of the easy part. Now, how do we figure out what the maximum height is? Well, we should realize that when we reach the maximum height at this point, the velocity is going to be equal to zero. So what we're going to do here is find out how long it takes to get to the maximum height, realizing that the velocity will be equal to zero. So we take the velocity equation at h max. We know that the velocity is equal to zero. So we're going to take this equation and plug in zero for velocity and then calculate the time. So zero is equal to 144 minus 32t, which tells us what the time will be when the object reaches the maximum height. Moving this to the left side, we get 32t is equal to 144, and so t is equal to 144 divided by 32, which is 72 divided by 16, 36 divided by 8, and that would be 4.5 seconds. So in 4.5 seconds, we reach the maximum height, so now we're going to take the height equation, the y equation, to figure out after 4.5 seconds how high we have gone. So now we take this equation and we write y when t equals the time that we just found, 4.5 seconds, is equal to 144 times 4.5 minus 16 times, oops, 16 times 4.5 squared. At this time, I think I'm going to grab my calculator. So we have 4.5, we square that, times 16, that's 324. So this would be equal to something, minus 324, uh, plus 144 times 4.5, ah, that would be 648. And 648 minus 324 is equal to 324. Let's see if I got this right, 144 times 4.5. Yes, indeed. So that's position that would be meters. Oh, ah, again, I tried to use standard unit, but we set up the problem with feet, so I better use feet here. So the maximum height the object reaches is 324 feet. At that point, the velocity is zero. Now we need to find the total time that it will take for it to go back down to the ground. Now when it reaches the ground, the vertical position will be zero. So now what we want is we want time is equal to question mark 
when y equals 0. So now we take this equation right here, plug in 0 for y and solve for t. So we use the equation again. So we say 0 is equal to 144t minus 16t squared. So here we can factor out a t. So we had 0 is equal to t times 144 minus 16t. And that means that t is equal to 0 or if we solve this for, if we set this equal to 0, we get 144 minus 16t is equal to 0, which means that 16t is equal to 144, or t is equal to 9. So here are the two possibilities. Either t is equal to 0, or t is equal to 9 when the object is on the ground. Now that kind of makes sense. First of all, when the object hasn't left yet, t is equal to 0, it will be on the ground. Then when it returns to the ground, nine seconds have elapsed. It turns out we found that it took four and a half seconds. Where did we calculate it? Right here, four and a half seconds to reach the maximum height and another four and a half seconds to come back down for a total time of nine seconds for the total round trip. And that's how we use calculus to figure out position, velocity, acceleration, and anything else you want to know about its motion simply by taking the first derivative of the position and then taking the second derivative of the position, which is the first derivative of the velocity. And that's how it's done.